on the first day of October, Halloween gave to me a psycho who killed Janet Lee. Well, hey there, everyone. Welcome back to yet another celebration of Halloween, uh, the Legion Podcast's 31 Days of Halloween. It starts right here. This is episode number one for the 2021 season, and I could not be more excited to welcome you all to this fall extravaganza. That's right. It's Halloween. It's what we all wait for. It is the one holiday every year that really captures my imagination and uh, makes me buy stuff that I shouldn't buy. All of that stuff. I love Halloween so much. I love doing this run of movies uh, to celebrate uh, my favorite holiday and, and the Halloween season in general. Um, last season, or last year, if you if you hung around for that one, in 2020, we did 31 movies starting on October 1st and ending with October 31st. Uh, little mini reviews, little mini discussions of, of these movies. But it, in a lot of ways, it's a, a way to sort of highlight hey, here are some great movies to watch this time of year. Uh, some maybe you haven't seen, or some I haven't seen, and and I like a little uh, bit of surprise on my list as well. Um, not to give anything away, that's the other thing we do uh, on the 31 Days of Halloween. We do not discuss what comes next. It, every day is a new surprise, and I enjoy that as well. So we're starting off with a bit of a bang. Uh, by which I mean one of the classics of, of horror cinema. Of course, I'm talking about Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho from 1960. Um, this was a really interesting watch for me because I hadn't seen Psycho in a very long time. And I was really excited to sit down and, and watch it again because my memory of it had faded somewhat, partially due to you know age and <laughs> the effects of drugs and alcohol. Uh, as well as just uh, the, the the natural process of the brain not working as well. Uh, at any rate, it it had been a long time since I watched Psycho. I was excited to go, to go back and revisit it. Um, and, you know, the thing you remember, I think, about the movie Psycho, uh, aside from the shower scene, which is iconic and, and truly one of the best edited scenes in the history of cinema, um, you remember Mother, of course, and, and if you're me, uh, in particular, the Mother, the blood, oh God, the blood, you know, uh, it's a, just a wonderful moment. And so this was the first time that I'd watched it when it was um, like in high def, I think. It might have been my first high def watch of Psycho, but it looked great. I just watched it streaming on Amazon, uh, which embarrassingly... I don't own a Blu-ray or 4K quality uh, copy of Psycho, and that is something that I plan to rectify very, very shortly because it's a movie I ought to watch more. It's just a, a terrific, terrific film. Um, so in addition to the stuff that you're going to remember because it's the stuff that everybody remembers about Psycho, like I said, the shower scene, um, you might even remember that last shot of the car being pulled out of the swamp uh, I think that's rather iconic. And, and of course, that final uh, grim smile on the face of Norman Bates as uh, the mother personality fully takes over. But the thing I really dug about Psycho on this watch was, in particular, the performance from Anthony Perkins. And, you know, this is a little bit of stating the obvious, perhaps, but... It really is one of those performances that is shockingly good for being a film that was made in 1960. Uh, it's very natural in a lot of ways. It's really sinister at times, but also the movie does a good job. I, 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 as I was watching, I tried to put myself in the seat of someone who was watching Psycho for the first time in 1960. And the movie does such a great job of, of head faking throughout the film. It really does kind of keep you guessing if you've never seen it before. Um, there is, of course, the very famous 
uh, left turn that the film takes by introducing the character of Marion Crane, as played by Janet Lee, um, who is a woman who is in love with a man who doesn't have a lot of money, and uh, he's got an ex-wife and is paying a shit ton of alimony, and, you know, she wants a life with him, and so when the opportunity presents itself for her to swipe some cash and go on the run, she takes it, and it's not something that, you know, like, she's not a bad character, she's not uh, a bad person, really. I mean, you could argue she's a thief, sure, but she's also sort of doing it for love, you know, that she wants to be with this guy and and doesn't feel like she can do that uh, with their combined meager salaries. And so she takes this money uh, when the opportunity presents itself, this, you know, rich businessman uh, paying for a house in cash. Uh, there's a great bit of dialogue, too, where he talks about how you can't buy happiness, but uh, you can you can buy uh, a, a lack of unhappiness. And anyway, so, you know, of course, she goes on the road, uh, ends up at the Bates Motel. Uh, I really like the sequences, too, of the cop finding her uh, asleep by the side of the road and finding her behavior suspicious because it is, in fact, very suspicious behavior. And, uh, and going to the car lot and that whole scene where she's just like, I just want to give you some money and leave with a used car. Is that a problem? Or would, what, what, a woman can't just be in a hurry? The, what the hell, everybody? Uh, but I think all that stuff is really good and, and really tense. But, you know, the movie is her movie up until the point where she gets murdered in the shower. Um, you know, the scene with her and Norman Bates in the parlor of the, uh, the, the manager's office with all the stuffed animals surrounding them and their discussion of why he stayed with his mother and so forth. Um, all that stuff is just so good. And you get the moment too, where Janet Lee as Marion Crane sort of realizes through the course of this conversation she has with Norman Bates that it's probably going to be in her best interest just to go back, you know, go back to Arizona where she's from and, and sort of face the music and not spend her life looking over her shoulder, or, you know, worried that someday somebody's going to knock on the door and it's going to, uh, to be a cop or somebody coming for her because of this money. So, you know, we, we sort of understand that her character made a bad choice and is now going to try to make up for that bad choice. But before she can, you know, Norman Bates uh, psychos her in, in the shower. And again, as someone who would be in the theater in 1960 watching this movie for the first time, I can't imagine that it wasn't shocking that Janet Lee just got straight up murdered. And, and this is the main character of the film. It's something that has been done you know, in film sense, hell, I did it in Lost After Dark when I was writing that. I, I like that uh, that false main character. And and then the movie really becomes about the mystery of what happened to Marion Crane as you get the, uh, the detective Arbogast, as played by Martin Balsam, who's great in it, and uh, Janet Lee's sister, or Marion Crane's sister, who has come looking for, as well as this lover who lives in a... a uh, the small town just down the road from the Bates Motel. And there is this growing sense that things are spiraling out of control as Norman, in theory, uh, covers up the crimes of his mother. And so it it's really just uh, a, a master class in how to create tension in a film and also how to dispose shockingly of a main character and still keep the audience entirely engaged because there, there's a shift at a, at a certain point where the story is no longer Marion Crane's story. It's Norman Bates's story. And, uh, I, I really think that it, it's just next to impossible. It's such a great magic trick that Hitchcock pulls off there. Um, and then, you know, obviously, like I said, Norman Bates, uh, as played by Anthony Perkins, is just one of cinema's great villains. Uh, he's he's both sympathetic and and uh, a little pathetic 
as well, but then you also understand that he's this disturbed person who is capable of great violence. And, uh, you know, they don't make a lot of, out of it, but there's kind of an indication that, you know, Marion Crane certainly wasn't the first person he killed, not just uh, his mother and his mother's lover, but also a couple of other young women who stopped by the uh, the Bates Motel. Um, and you can tell the moment that he gives Marion Crane the key to room number one where all of this is going. Like, you understand that he is he's marked her for death at that point. Um, it's just tremendous. I, like, the performances are, are, are so damn good um, from Anthony Perkins and Janet Lee and Martin Balsam. And, you know, the other performers are fine, I would argue, uh, but are a little bit more steeped in that sort of tradition of uh, performances of that era. You know, it's very stagey in a lot of ways, whereas Anthony Perkins isn't acting like he's performing on stage. He's just being a guy. Um, sorry, Vera Miles is the the sister Lila. Um, and then John Gavin as Sam Loomis, the boyfriend, Dr. Loomis, uh, I, I feel pretty confident, uh, was... Uh, get, w- got his name from this character in Psycho. Um, John McIntyre is the sheriff, the the town sheriff, who is not uh, entirely certain that uh, Norman Bates is, you know, a weirdo for sure and a hermit, but may probably not a killer. You know, um, I think that's pretty terrific stuff too. And uh, yeah, at the end of the day, you know, where does uh, what what else is it about Psycho that makes it so special? Part of it's the music that Bernard Herrmann score that was later ripped off uh, for Reanimator. I mean, that score is not just the the shrieking strings of that shower scene, but the whole thing is just so so good. Uh, Hitchcock moves the camera around and and makes the movie feel very dynamic. That shot when Martin Balsam, the overhead shot when he gets stabbed is just terrific, as well as him going down the stairs. It, I mean, it's, it's just one of those movies that is almost head-scratching that it's that good for the time it was made. I mean, this is a movie that is now 61 years old-ish, and it still packs a punch. It's still a really good movie. It's still really entertaining. Uh, the you know the the black and white is used really well with all the the shadow and so forth. I'll tell you the the scene where um, Lila Crane, uh, the Vera Miles character, approaches the house of Norman Bates for the first time and kind of winds through this scrubby brush up the steps to uh, to to the house for the for her first visit to this house of horrors. It's so good. The shot is so good. Uh, the the camera work is just fantastic. It, I mean, at the risk of repeating myself, like Psycho is just one of the great films of all time. Not just horror films. It's just a great film, and it is certainly one of the Rosetta Stones of horror. You know, uh, people have been imitating or cribbing from Psycho since it came out. And, uh, and and rightfully so. It's a tremendous movie. Um, and I think an appropriate way to begin our look at these films uh, in Halloween uh, for the Halloween season. So, yeah, if you haven't seen it in a long time, like myself, if you're uh, one of those people that just doesn't know something good when it's in front of you, then by all means, you should absolutely check out Psycho. If, it's, uh, if it hasn't been... Uh, that long since you saw it, then, you know, you can just, uh, call me the fool that I am for waiting so long to return to it. But, uh, yeah, boy, that movie, it still works. And I'll tell you another thing that I thought was really interesting, looking at it from the eyes of someone in 2021, where one of the things I was kind of worried about was the sort of association between cross-dressing and being a murderer, which is something that, like, De Palma is a little bit guilty of that. It, it, it's sort of like making lesbians the villain of the movie or whatever. It, it just, 
it associates anything that's slightly off the beaten path in terms of like sexuality or sexual arousal and makes it a villainous trait. And the interesting thing about Psycho, and a lot of people complain about the uh, Dr. Richmond character who at the end of the movie just kind of steps in to be like, all right, everybody, here's what's going on. And, and here is the history of Norman Bates so that we can fully explain everything. Um, but in that explanation, when somebody suggests, well, oh yeah, he was kind of a deviant because he dressed in women's clothes. And the doctor is like, no, that's really not what he was. He was adopting this other persona that happened to be a, a woman. Uh, it was his mother. So it wasn't just that he was uh, a deviant because he, he liked to, you know, do a little cross dressing. It was that he was psychologically broken. And I also like the explanation of like, you know, Norman Bates hasn't been a whole person in a very long time. He has been sharing his, his mind and body with this other mother persona. And finally she just takes over and Norman Bates is gone entirely. It's really made me want to go back and watch uh, psycho two, which I haven't uh, watched in a very long time as well. And that may happen. It's not going to be part of uh, this series. I got, a couple of runs of movies that are themed, um, but the Psycho franchise is not part of that. Uh, that's just going to be a little something I do for myself in my off time. But, um, but yeah, there you have it. That is uh, film number one of the 2021 31 Days of Halloween. Uh, Psycho. Who who'd have thunk that Psycho still was a good movie? It's uh, not just a good movie. It's a great movie. It's so so uh, cleverly written. Uh, Joseph Stefano, who wrote the, uh, the the screenplay based on, of course, the book by Robert Block. Uh, Stefano would go on to write like a bunch of Outer Limits stuff and sort of notoriously wrote that uh, Skin of Evil episode of The Next Generation where Tasha Yar dies. Uh, not necessarily a great episode, but boy, Psycho is a real achievement in writing. It's so good. Uh, the dialogue is so fun and clever and... I love anytime Norman Bates opens his mouth to say something, I just can't get enough of it. Really, really like this movie. Um, and like I said, if it's been a while, definitely check it out and, uh, and check out more of this. Uh, we've got another 30 movies ahead of us before, um, we wrap up 29 before we get to our big finale. I like to pick something a little special for, uh, for Halloween proper. 